What is it to be neutral? Is it not perhaps like the anagram of the word states, to be natural? Some might say, that's not how natural is spelled. Despite this petty semantic argument, isn't it more intriguing to see, however, that the word nature is a part of this rearrangement? Then one might ask, what is nature? Is it part of the divine, or is the divine in all of it? Is it the internal awareness finding itself through the constant flow of the external, which will inevitably lead back to the internal magnitude of everything and nothing? Or is it ebb and flow, temperance found through exertion and the travails defined by tranquility? Who is the one defining these acts? Is such a thing at all necessary? I look out upon the day and see that the flow of nature continues ceaselessly. It does not perform an act and then wait by the sidelines for the judge's scorecards. No, that insane ritual of perpetuating sagacity is only undergone by humankind. Does one shout at the sun? Hey sun, you are shining your light at the incorrect temperature today. Humans may laugh at the idiocy of such a statement, yet fail to see that they are making proclamations just as insolent as this throughout each and every single day. Many may not even see the silliness of the statement of example towards the sun, since so many actually do complain about nature's exuberance whenever it feels displeasing to them or is of inconvenience to their tiny business affairs. Yet, nature remains indifferent to the petty qualms and statements of mankind who shake their fists in the air whenever they feel ill-tempered towards nature's results. And in accord with the duality nature of the mind, men and women the world over perk up if the sun peeks through the dark clouds, pouring down warmth and radiation. Ah, what a beautiful day, isn't it? The prototypical statement is made by the many, as if nature heard the rally cry of the multitude of complainers, and through this squawk box persuasion, decided to change its tune and set a different course for the appeasement of the grumblers. No such events like this would ever occur, because nature is neutral and all of its actions are perfect because they are in perfect accord with the harmony of its own circumstances. There are no second chances or failed attempts with the neutrality of nature. There is only the constant flow of perfect action that is indifferent to isolated assessment. If one is able to touch this in their own experience, they will come to know what it means to be neutral. No part of the neutral nature is emotionally attached to the days that have occurred before or the days to come. And taken further, there is not a single modicum of attachment to the moment before or the moment ahead. Everything is in the irreducible now, as this is the only place that perfection can be attained. If there is judgment, is there perfection? Obviously not since an event that is assessed is being demarcated into boundaries and conditions and then evaluated from separate vantage points and opinion-based mentations. By judging, one is automatically saying that the event in question is imperfect and needs to be scrutinized. Yet, who is the one doing the examination? For to do this, one must in consecrated tones be declaring themselves as being a perfect God who is without fault and able to both step into the manifestation of the duality existence while also simultaneously functioning within the realm of the untouchable perfection in the eternally living now. Did no one understand, he that is without sin among you, 
let him first cast a stone. By not being neutral in the nature of oneself, one is subjecting one's own mind to the trivial qualms of the rabble, who are all too ready to tell you at every junction point and arisen opportunity that you are living your life incorrectly. This trains the mind to wander into multitudinous directions of dysfunction, which serve such thoughts as, I am not successful enough, or I am not doing enough, or I must feel guilty for not obeying everyone else's commandments. The list is truly endless, and the consciousness is suffering vicariously at the hands of others who could truly care less about you wasting your entire life away following their insolent demands and arrogant suppositions about what you should be doing with your life. It is your life. By following the judgments and advice of others, you have suffered the strains of duality by being clenched into the vice grips of the multitude who keep adding their pressures onto your mind. This is why it is called ad-vice, because each movement that one makes from the judgment of others is an additional vice that grips the mind and heart, hence ad-vice. The passing down of knowledge has nothing to do with pressuring anyone to conform to a pattern or move in a direction that they otherwise would not have considered. The awareness of this difference is seen by those who live a life of philosophical neutrality, where everything is done for the sake of the action itself. Everyone caught in the duality cycle of emotion can never touch neutrality because they let their emotions control them instead of learning how to control oneself. How easy it is for the many to be manipulated by another through a few choice words, seen by the ego sense as a compliment or an insult. Let it be known that in the wisdom of neutrality, to accept an external compliment is to also accept the insults every single time. Look at the duality construct of the thumbs up and thumbs down on this video site. The maker of a video who is usurped by their own cognitive dualities is looking forward to all of the thumbs up that they receive, yet their heart will sink into the depths of pity, anger and sorrow whenever they receive a thumbs down. The system could care less about anyone being hurt or happy, so long as there is another duality structure that is serving the energetic elements of the operation. Obviously, the same goes for the comment section and all of its dramatic roller coaster swings. This principle applies to every area of one's life, as nearly all humans are concerned with the opinions of others for every action that is taken. Only in neutrality does one detach themselves from such childish dramas and uninvited opinions. Social media has become so incredibly popular because the many are seeking after external gratification from anyone who is willing to give it to them. 
truly, beggars that are out with their begging bowls. The amount of energy that is created from the mental duality of billions participating in such an experiment is truly staggering. If one needs to constantly outsource for their inspiration, they truly do not have the inner spirit of neutrality and will be caught in the win-lose game of life potentially for all eternity. When one is attached to yesterday, there is automatically an attachment for the future because the psi call must always complete itself. And within this structure, there is no opportunity for the disclosure of the infinite freedom for one is caught in the mire of nostalgia and expectation that are intertwined in the Ouroboros of raveled mental entanglement. The problem always seeks out its solution. This is why it needs to be asked, why must everything become a problem? It doesn't need to be that way. A problem is a psychological inducement that is conjured up through the aperture of intemperance that creates an issue so that it can feel a release of tension through its pre-formulated resolution. It is the element of paradox that is working itself out through its yin-yang momentum. Why is this so important to become aware of? Simply because this is the parallel swing that everyone is going through every moment of their lives that creates anxiety, worry, depression, anger, frustration, desire, confusion, overstimulation, and every other fabricated issue of the mind-biology connection. Humans are truly chasing the solution to problems of their own creation. That is one esoteric meaning behind the snake biting its own tail symbol. The philosophical life of neutrality does not mean that one has no compassion, empathy, or is incapable of feeling emotions. On the contrary, only a person of true neutrality is able to comprehend and discern what these internalized emotions actually are, since there is then no personalized attachment towards the emotions, and therefore, the factual observation of them is able to take place, which is laid upon a solid foundation of understanding, overstanding, and insight. Without this position of balance, one leads themselves consistently to a state of asymmetry and through the various chains and levels of insanity. As Zhuang Zi has said, when an archer is shooting for nothing, he has all his skill. If he shoots for a brass buckle, he is already nervous. If he shoots for a prize of gold, he goes blind, or sees two targets. He is out of his mind. His skill has not changed, but the prize divides him. He cares. He thinks more of winning than of shooting, and the need to win drains him of power. That is the state of emotional instability and agitated ambition which human society has formulated itself around, believing it to be the only condition and circumstance where anything can be accomplished. Nothing could be further from the truth. The divided mind is caught in the trap of insanity, and this constant peak and valley of irrational emotional decision-making only leads to frantic and frenetic movements that inevitably lead to the destruction of the internal and external environments. When there is a proliferation of polluted thoughts, there is in tandem a proliferation of pollution in the environment. As within, so without. The need to win or attain the prize splits the mind 
and that type of mind cares not for the consequences of its actions. It thinks only of the goal and the false admiration and idealized respect that are supposed to come along with the attainment of winning. Only the one who is shooting for nothing retains all of their skill and is able to observe the cause and effect of each action, which is perfection. In this capacity, one is able to be more efficient while also knowing what it actually means to care, because everything that needs to be done gets done, and all is done in perfect time, which is in the flow of the timeless. What humans call necessary emotions that make us human are nothing more than a formulation of absolutist schizophrenia that is internally justified through external repetition while simultaneously being externally utilized through sets of internal dogmatic notions. This is what the seers, sages, and true philosophers have been telling humanity for thousands upon thousands of years, and the message continues to be ignored. Unless you love all, do not even talk about love, because it is a false ideal used to make oneself feel righteous, where the virtue is nothing more than a smoke and mirror effect of one's own self-importance. Peak and valley emotions are simply die visions or dual visions, whereby when one is loved, another must be hated. Trust is put into this group because another group is not trusted. This person is my compatriot because that other person is my enemy. I respect that man or woman because I disrespect however many others. The examples continue endlessly. This is relative to the awareness of what it means to be choiceless because to make an emotional choice about anything is to indirectly disapprove of its seeming opposite. It is the great contradiction of conflict that so very, very few are able to see. If there is truly a concern to end all the issues, suffering, and ills that face our species every single moment of every day, then these principles of neutrality, paradox, and detachment not only need to be discerned and wholly understood, but need to be put into the awareness and essence of every individual in divide duel. As it stands now, however, humanity continues to glorify its diseased need to win mantra that is draining us of power. The great cosmic joke, however, is that we are only defeating ourselves. <laughs>